This is the Great Plains state of North Dakota, farm country. It's where one of the battles against human-caused extinction is being fought, only this time by pitting two biological invaders against each other. The enemy here is a weed called leafy spurge. So well adapted and tenacious, it threatens to kill off native grasses. It's already spread across a million acres. A century ago, pioneers accidentally brought it with them in bags of seed. Now the settlers' descendants are faced with the consequences. The leafy spurge limits the number of cattle that I can put in a pasture. I mean, they'll eat the grass that's in there, but if it's infested with leafy spurge, they just won't touch it. There's a milky substance to it, and it's pretty bitter. They don't like it. Cy Kittleson's great-grandfather homesteaded the land. Today, Cy and his father own 4,000 acres. The weed covers over a third of their ranch. They have tried spraying it with a weed killer, but leafy spurge is not easily beaten. I look at it as cancer to the land, and uh, it makes the land just totally useless. The chemicals cost between $90 and $100 a gallon, and um, it takes about a gallon to cover one acre of land, and so that's $100 an acre, and that's not counting your time. And that's about all the land is worth. Yeah. How, how many acres would that cover? Chuck Weiser, the local bank's agricultural loan yeah, officer, understands the financial toll of a biological invasion. Okay, you know exactly where that is, Chuck. He has battled leafy spurge in one way or another yeah, for 25 years. A leafy spurge is a very deep-rooted perennial that is competitive uh, for nutrients and moisture with our native grass. And so it has an advantage both in food storage in its root system and ability to regenerate growth. If a chemical won't stop it, how can farmers fight an invader that's taking over the ecological niche of native grasses? The solution may be another invader, discovered when scientists learned what kept leafy spurge in check in its native Russia. It's the flea beetle a case of fighting evolutionary fire with fire. Flea beetles feed on the roots and in the crown of the plant and bore holes allowing molds to get in. They deplete the uh, food reserve in the root and so they're just kind of beating it up so it's weaker and weaker and eventually does not produce any top growth. Flea beetles were first brought to Ward County in 1984. Each summer, teams harvest beetles and move them to infested areas. The beetles reproduce so rapidly that a release of 100 in one year yields a harvest of 2 million the next. That just leaves the challenge of actually getting them to the right place. We found that on the large infestations of spurge in really rough country that's hard to get into, we can put out more beetles faster using a light airplane than any other method. Our flight today consisted of 150 canisters we dropped with approximately 5,000 beetles in a canister we put out somewhere around 750,000 beetles. Weeds grab life from us. If we don't do something, we'll be taken over by them. It started out small, and now, every spring now, I go out and harvest these bugs and spread them around, and I can really see some good results with it now. It's gonna take a while, it's gonna take a long time, but I can see the results. The story of Sai's farm is a story of hope. It means that we can do more than just watch native species go extinct. We can fight back. <laughs>